Hello, hello, and welcome to the third installment of Caribbean Business, po Business Podcast, brought to you by Assuage Business Development Limited. I'm your host, Roel Rollox, Director, Business Development and Sales at Assuage, and here we help SMEs penetrate local and regional markets. To those of you listening in from LinkedIn, maybe YouTube or Facebook, uh, we are happy, so happy that you've joined us. Um, those coming in for the first time, really nice to have you. Those returning, so good to have your, your, your commitment and support. And as always, we look forward to a very interactive and a very informative discussion. For those of you joining in for the first time, the Caribbean Business Podcast seeks to provide a regular forum for discussion of issues pertinent to regional trade, highlight the significant role of regional services, service providers in economic growth and development, identify specific opportunities for exporting services into regionally and beyond, provide information on the how to's of exporting your products and services. Today and every first Tuesday, we'll be hosting key players in the export trade sector and SMEs across the region who will share on their experiences and expertise to help us navigate this world of business expansion through exporting. Tonight, we put a spotlight on doing business in Suriname. Now, Suriname became the 14th member state of the Car Car Caribbean community on July 4th, 1995. Since then, Suriname has secured its place as a vital part of a more united and prosperous CARICOM. In fact, just earlier this month, Mr. Diodat Maharaj, Executive Director of Caribbean Export Development Agency, expressed his excitement to ramp up collaboration with Suriname to improve export competitiveness in, this, in the private sector, as well as attract foreign direct investment to the country. So to help us explore some of the main opportunities for business partnership in Suriname, let's meet our panelist, Charlene Surudu Mejo, Managing Partner at Doors Advisory in Suriname, and Anushka Sonai, found, Founder and, and Director of the Creative Tech Hub and a Board Member of the Suriname Business Association. Charlene Surudu as managing partner at Door Advisory, one of the largest management consulting firms in Suriname, Ms. Sordomejo achieves results by connecting structure to people and priorities. Charlene is a dedicated and committed leader who is driven to use knowledge and insights to achieve practical and sustainable results. She provides a strong, authentic leadership style based on vision, values, execution and the continuous improvement to shape the right culture and achieve desired business results. Charlene is also a creative team player who combines analytical skills, problem solving techniques and a no nonsense customer oriented attitude to getting the job done. Charlene is passionate about helping organizations achieve their next level in performance. Her areas of specialty include implementing customer experience management through strategic customer journey insights, creative problem solving and delivering tailor-made business solutions, people and attitude-oriented approach in achieving sustainable culture changes, as well as qualitative and quantitative market research and analysis. Anushka Sonai Anushka is an ICT entrepreneur as well as a founder and president of Creative Tech Hub Caribbean Suriname, a cluster of companies that aims to develop the Caribbean's creative technology ecosystem from Suriname. Ms. Sona is a regional leader and is at the center of many Suriname and regional initiatives for young people and women to access training, hands-on experience and opportunities in order to work and thrive in the expanding technology sector. She is also active regionally as an advocate for awareness and training in ICT skills and the creation of an inclusive and the creation of an inclusive digital economy and the ICT friendly ecosystem. Anushka is the Chair of the Marketing and Communications Committee for the Caribbean Association of National Telecommunications Organizations.
Wow. So you see, those of you listening in, we have some powerful ladies with us in our midst this evening. You know, it's so good to have you on with us this evening. And as young, um, dynamic women, business leaders in Suriname, it speaks so well for some of what is happening in our CARICOM neighbor. So um, can I, may I call you Charlene and Anushka? Is that fine? Yes, totally fine with me. Great, great, excellent, nice to have you. So, I mean, being being a young woman in the field of business, how has this been for you? Has this been challenging, you know, making your way, you know, all the way to the top? You know, they always talk about the glass ceiling. How has it been for you, Charlene? Uh, it has been quite a journey <laughs> with ups and downs, but I would say I, I would lie if I said it was a, a very hard road because I always just believed in that both women and men have strong elements that need to be brought to the business uh, arena. So I just, I was always very open-minded to work with anybody and I'm glad that I, that it was well received. So yeah, it, it, it had its ups and downs, but uh, you know, sometimes you just need a sense of humor and a no-nonsense attitude and it, it'll get you far. <laughs> great, great. Nice to have you. And what about you, Anushka? Well, for me, um, yeah, I think your mindset and attitude is important, like how you handle most of the things that come your way. And that has been true to all the things that has uh, been on my path. And yes, there were challenges for me and not in my own companies and not in well, the companies where I work to develop myself further. But the sooner I become became part of the larger business community and I started to lead business organizations, I saw that, uh, you know, um, there was some misogyny and patriarchy. And most of the times people uh, will say that, hey, you're not experienced enough to know that, you know, you cannot develop a sector like this. And I have spent most of my time developing the technology sector in Suriname. So you have been, I have been uh, active with stakeholders outside of our companies. But then again, like Shailene said, it's your own mindset and I'm, uh, a person who uh, doesn't uh, get demotivated. My motivation comes from the inside. So, yeah, it yes. helps. But I also have a very good support system. So thanks to that, it went well. Great. Nice having you, Anushka. And, and, and while we have you, maybe we could jump right in because I know most persons tuning in would really like to know on the, on the get-go, right? A little bit about Suriname. Maybe you can take about a, 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 a three to five minutes to share a little bit about Suriname, things that people may not know, any fun facts, as well as what would you see as some of the emerging areas or sectors in Suriname at this time? Okay, uh, so one of the things that I don't think most of the younger people know is that Suriname was formerly um, known as the Dutch Guyana. So we have Guyana, which was British Guyana, firstly. We have Suriname in the middle, and on the east side, we have French Guyana. And Suriname was Dutch Guyana. So that's something that uh, gives away that we're speaking Dutch. So, yeah. Our native language is Dutch. Um, English is our is my fourth language actually, um, wow. and most people in Suriname speak more than one language. So we speak our own local, um, like you have in Jamaica the Patwa, and uh, yes. we have in Suriname we have Sranang Tongo. So we speak Sranang Tongo, Sanami, Japanese, so Indonesian, uh, Chinese. So those are mixtures of. Um, languages that we speak and most people in Suriname are bilingual or multilingual so English is not our first language mostly and I think that if you look at the people uh, Surinamese people are uh, we are very creative even if I say it myself uh, we love to uh, try new things and also that brings some entrepreneurial spirit with it if we see something and uh, hey here is there is a business opportunity there we will jump on it and try to you know uh, make it uh, a business or there's an event somewhere and then all of the all of a sudden you will see small pop-up stands and people trying to do some trade and, and creating things making things and then selling that to the larger uh, audiences um but we love 
one thing that you cannot uh, take away from us is food. We love food. <laughs> and if we go to an event or to a party or to anything, and if the food is not good, then the party wasn't good. So wow. food is our love language. <laughs> yes. yes. In, in Trinidad, Amen. we would say party done. That's it. We, we're going home. Party done. <laughs> <laughs> and we lime. Yeah, we lime. We love to lime. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah. I, so, Charlie, what about you? What what would be some of one or two of the highlights about the culture um, you feel you find significant about being? Would do you say Surinamese? Is that correct, Surinamese? Okay, Suriname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our Suriname culture, yeah, for Surinamese people, I think well, Anushka covered the basics and the most important thing, which she ended with food. We have such <laughs> a large yes. We really have a a really. Um, I would say distinguished taste. So we are also very sometimes picky people when we go outside of the country. Uh, when we try new things, we always like to compare and we're like, hmm, it might do it a little bit better. <laughs> you know, but that's that's really because we're all um, our history, because of the different uh, ethnicities that 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 are all here. And and as most of the Caribbean countries, we have that same history. So you know, we started off with with uh, people coming in from from places like Africa, etc. But then, but then, because of our Dutch, uh, 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 you know, colonial past, um, soon after we had like the Indians, but we also had like people from Indonesia and people from China uh, coming in very early. You know, after the the slavery ended. So so that mixture of Asian with with uh afro with you know wow, uh, even so Dutch and european uh influences has really given us this 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 taste for us yes <laughs> that's really a part food. so would really would you say that has that's a a very important part of us <laughs> what would you say um charlene that has helped or allowed you to be open to um, doing business, conducting business with other other countries in the Caribbean? How has that affected business relations, this mix and this varied history? I, yeah, I think, well, I think what, what happened, well, Suriname being part of the, of the CARICOM has obviously for years been a part of that community. But I think Suriname in itself is a country that is in development, is growing, is, is learning. And I think um, for the last couple of years, I think what we have seen more and more is that companies have branched out and have um, explored options within the Caribbean, within the region, but also the other way around. We've seen, you know, and now more frequent, we've seen companies and, and, and people exploring possibilities in Suriname. So that is something that I think, yes, in the in the past couple of years has been more and more, and I think it would only it will only um, expand. It will only expand. increase. So Anushka, yeah. what would you say would be some of the the significant trends? You know that business persons listening in would should pay attention to. You know earlier you spoke about British Guyana. And it's we, you know, we told you everyone knows about their oil finds and so forth. But what are some of the things that are emerging? Those those key trends, business trends that persons should should be aware of in Suriname. In Suriname, one of the key things that's that's very important when you come to Suriname to do business is culture. I just mentioned that we love food, but we also love entertainment. We we are very warm people, but in terms of emerging, our culture is important. So we will not do something or do business in something that will damage our culture or our um, environment. Okay. Um, more and more awareness is raising on that. So more and more people are um, better aware about the impact of environment as we had flooding, we had the pandemic, etc. So we are more aware, but we don't have all the skills and knowledge yet in-house. So there is a, a good opportunity there. An emerging industry is the agriculture industry, and it's very wide. So it's not just only rice and bananas, but also uh, horticulture and, uh, you know, when also uh, bees, uh, when you, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, Ma, maybe. Livestock, uh, anim livestock animals. With bees, yes. yes. But also bees, the uh, honey producers. Oh, yeah. bees, bees. Oh, yes. got you. Yeah. yeah, that one. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Um, 
And yeah, oil and gas is also big in Suriname because um, like Diana, we also made some um, discoveries and there is a lot of discussion happening now on local content. I'm part of a local content um, uh, group that is looking at capacity building. So there is a lot of um, opportunities and growth potential uh, markets to develop uh, human capital. And the creator economy in Suriname is up and rising. Everything in the creative industries gets more and more traction nowadays. So those are two, three things, but also tourism. Uh, we have a lot of the eco resorts and lounges, etc. that due to COVID, they were a little bit, um, how do you say it? It was very difficult for them to stay open. And what we see is that some of the bigger ones, they took that as an opportunity to do the renovations and all, all those things that they still had to do. And now they're making a comeback as everything has opened up, etc. So uh, they are making a comeback and we have great opportunities in the tourism sector. Oh, yeah. excellent. Um, great contributions there. Anything you'd care to add, um, Charlene, in terms of yeah. um, emerging markets, things that business persons should pay attention to? Well, absolutely. I think one of the things that um, will be for everybody, of course, is focused on but is 90% covered by us. So that already tells you something about our opportunities in terms of uh, you know, carbon credits in terms of um, ecotourism, in terms of um, exploring more and more, you know, of that um, that type of sector, that type of industry. So that is definitely something that I think emerging countries, you know, if, if there's innovation that they could add, if there's knowledge that they could add, that would be something for the long run and something that is, you know, sustainable. So things like renewable energy and, and looking at those options, I think for the future are for Suriname, extremely important. So that is definitely something to add and to look at. Suriname. And then, and then maybe, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. Maybe, maybe also something interesting to, to add in terms of opportunity. Um, not a lot of people I think are aware of that. And even I have, have just um, discovered that we have that is um, there is a large amount of a, um, a, a substance called kaolin, kaolin. I don't know if, you, if you're known with that, but it's a mineral. It's, it actually, it actually um, is the thing that, that makes porcelain and china that, that causes the whiteness in it, in those products. And we have large amounts of that in our, uh, what we call our Marowene district in Mungo. This is the city of Mungo. That is just not at all yet developed. And this is something that could be used as filler in production for, for rubber, for plastic, for oh, okay. you know, different types of material. So, so I would say, you know, anybody has uh, some, some knowledge and innovation to add to, to those type of industries, that would be great. That would be, there, there is opportunity plenty for that. Yes. If uh, you were going to add um, Anushka? No, no, no. Thank you. Uh, I, will, I, will, I was, you know, I was thinking in the same vein. You know, you mentioned, you know, Guyana being right next door, and we know of the rivers. You know, and we know of, you know, that certainly um, is significant. Is it the same in Suriname? Are there possibilities for like hydroelectric power? Are those things that are, are being explored? Yes. Um, in fact, we have a hydropower facility which is now under a lot of pressure because of the heavy rainfalls that we have. And some of the uh, villages in the interior close by to the uh, hydro power has flooded. Um, and, and that's what I was saying. It's raising awareness now in why we are and how we can um, uh, work with, uh, how do you say it? Uh, if we work with someone that we look at environment, how are we preserving our climate, that we are not doing things that are going to damage us and all the NGOs that are working on this, looking into it. But I think that uh, gold in, in Brocopondo, that's big. Um, we always make a joke about it, but um, for the past recent years, we know that it is not a joke anymore. It's really true that people just found gold in their backyard. So they will just wow. dig up. and So that's where you should stay, uh, Raul, when you're here in, in Brocopondo. Sure. <laughs> I will be looking. I'll be 
put me right there. I'll, I'll be vacation and somewhere where you have gold. <laughs> great. Uh, well, these are these are certainly great opportunities. I'm sure uh, many persons tuning in may not, you know, um, have been aware that these are some of the opportunities um, that exist. Um, but in terms of being able to connect with these, you know, um, and, and, and in this way, we would like to kind of transition and maybe this is a point in which Charlene can lead off. You know, so we understand these are the opportunities. But what is it really like doing business in Suriname? You know, if persons were to say set up, uh, make joint ventures, or I mean, what would be the best way to approach in terms of actually doing business? What are the challenges? What are some of the things to look out for um, in terms of getting business done in Suriname? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll try to give you an, an overview of, of what the, the way to go is. First of all, what's important to know, I'm really good in culture because we have seen it even within um, the multinationals where expats come in and, you know, people from abroad come in and they really don't know always how to move about and act and behave sometimes towards the different cultures because there really are a separate different cultures that also would um, a surface within doing business. So one of the, the important things is is really to to get a good grasp of the different cultures to to know, you know, um, not just on an ethnic ethnic approach, you know, so ethnic ethnic cultures, but also business wise. You know, we have a lot of influence that I would say do slightly differ from the Caribbean way of doing business. Um, a lot in Suriname has to do with trust. Trust is a very important aspect in terms of partnerships, in terms of joint ventures. We are a people that are, well, as Anushka mentioned, we're warm, but we also are sometimes a little bit standoffish if it comes to we don't know who you are and we don't know, you know what you're about. So establishing trust is one of the, the very important things, um, um, you know, for, for outsiders to to do business with certain. And then I would say an important thing is um, to know to know the networks, to really uh, get into the networks, to, to, to make contact with you know, business associations, with uh, different types of associations, know who is who in terms of um, you know, the, the corporate field. Um, Suriname is a small country in the, in the sense of population. Right, we have we have a little less than five hundred ninety thousand people living in Suriname, and the majority is living just in the city, which is which is Paramaribo, which is along the coastline. So it's it's very um, very small, but also you know in that sense, uh, it's almost like a village. So everybody knows each other within the business environment. So that does mean that if you come in and want to do business you need to have a good grasp of, of who to work with and who maybe not to work with based on just, you know, not having the right credentials or not having the right uh, uh, experience in that sense. So I think that is very important. Now I'll give you some, some uh, challenges that you might, that you might have and that you need to overcome. A lot of our challenges have to do uh, often with uh, dealing with certain bureaucracy, right? So our institutions, uh, especially if it if it comes down to registration of things and you know getting certain information, it can be very bureaucratic. Now we're not alone in that within the Caribbean, but I do feel that businesses in Suriname um, that that challenge will sometimes be magnified because because of our small scale, right? So you would maybe suspect that things would flow easier, but there is a lot of bureaucracy. So again, to overcome that, you have to know who is who and what the paths are in terms of, uh, you know, getting set up and, and making the right uh, moves. So that's very important, I would say. Start there. Yeah. yeah. So would you say, you know, one of the struggles we have in the Caribbean region uh, pertain to how do we value real skill and real talent? You know, we're yeah. not known for being a real meritocracy in that I may have a very good business idea. I may have, you know, demonstrate a lot of innovation, but if I'm not connected, if I don't know the right people, if I don't knock the right glasses at the right events, you know, um, it becomes difficult. So is this a similar, similar thing you would say in Suriname? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You know, one of the things what's, what's interesting about Suriname people, Raul, is that um, we did in 2020, we did a national values assessment. And one of the top values that Suriname people have mentioned towards being, you know, a part of our culture on a national level is that we are very, um, uh, uh, I would say, creative thinkers, but also we're problem solvers. So we we like to be creative in, in solving problems, right? So that is a that is a value that people hold very dear. But at the same time, um, our structures within the country are not always set up to give people the platform for that. So so even in that sense, I think a, a business opportunity would be to, to, to showcase, to highlight, to link creative thinkers with other, you know, creatives within the region and, and, and to exchange ideas, to, to uh, come up with, you know, uh, new techniques or new methods in terms of uh, um, uh, creating more sustainable solutions, business solutions, social solutions, etc. So I definitely yes. think that is, that is important, yeah. I see we have an offline submission here. Is it best to export to Suriname or migrate the business to the country? I don't know which one of the panelists would want to take that one. What would you question. say? Export or actually go through um, all that is required to set a business there? Which would be best? Anushka, go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends on what type of business you want to start. Um, yeah. In business services, the business services sector, I think it's all, always better to work together with a local partner because the whole process of establishing a country is becoming very easy. Uh, it's simple to start a company here, uh, but it's uh, difficult to, uh, what Shalin mentioned, gain the trust of um, other businesses so they will support or will buy from you. We first need to know that you are legit. The KYC in Suriname, I recently said this on another podcast, is that we have a KYC process, which is not the usual due diligence process with all the. We just call each other up and say, hey, person XYZ wants to do ABC, and uh, do you know him? What is it? Can I trust okay. it or not? You know, and yes. if you're yes. not good there, you're, you're not getting into business. On the other hand, there are some businesses that you can only start if you do it through the government or through yes. the banking systems. For instance, there was this party that did a, uh, they had a due diligence tool for uh, fintech, but it didn't come off the ground because in Suriname, the legislation says that only banks can come with such products. So you have to be a local uh, bank to do this. So. In that case, working together with the local partner would be better. And yes, I think yes. the same goes for the timber industry. Yes. 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 Can I, I elaborate I a little bit on sure, uh, the sure. points that Shalene mentioned? Because that yes. is the first And we will take, we have another question. So we will take that question after. But you go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to get the full view, because uh, Shalene already made some great contributions. I think um, if you want to come to Suriname and start a business, uh, what you need to know is that contrary to Guyana and Trinidad and I think Jamaica as well, the registration at the Chamber of Commerce in Suriname is mandatory. Where in the other countries, the being a member of the cha of the chamber is is something that you choose to do. In Suriname, it's mandatory. First, you should have a Chamber of Commerce registration. And that's that also makes the, the institution, Chamber of Commerce, more like a registration institution than a business support organization. So we have the Suriname Trade and Industry Association, the Association for uh, producer, pr the Production Sector, which is called ASFA, but you also have um, many of the branch, um, the sector-specific associations. Associations. And working with those business support associations or sector associations is the best way of entering the market because they will introduce you so to the people and uh, that's how you will be um, better known and you will know who is who. I, I'm, I was laughing when, when uh, Shalene mentioned who is who because yesterday we launched our partnership with the Guyanese company. And one of the first pr projects that we are going to do is uh, bringing out the who is who in business Suriname guide. Ah, excellent. 
And you have that in Trinidad, you have it in Jamaica, Barbados, and Guyana, and now we're launching that in Suriname. So that will be also a good um, resource for people. Uh, so you just go to who's who that Asar and you will find the information. And I also wanted to say that what you need to know about our judicial system, it's based on the Dutch civil system. So everything that happens is in the Dutch. But there has not been um, one known dispute that has, has gone to court over the last few years. Most of the cases, we are trying to solve them outside of the court with arbit okay. arbitrary um, yes. surfaces. Arbitration. Yes. Arbitration, yeah. So we don't go to court for disputes, or they ha there haven't been many, but that also means that the KYC that we have works. <laughs> Even though it's not an advanced tool, it's just mouth, um, who knows who, uh, it, it works. Yes. So those are the few things that I wanted to um, elaborate on. Um, and also we have a foreign direct investment unit established by, by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Business. People can just go on the site and register to become a investor or to get linked up with a local partner. Yes. Yes, I would, I would want to, I see the question um, comes back again. What recommendations would the panelists share to help with research about doing business in Suriname. So if you're going to research, uh, what recommendations, I guess, where, where can you point persons to um, in terms of um, having to conduct this research? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is, there is the, well, we have an official bureau for statistics, but yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not a lot of updated info. So what, what I would suggest, um, people people who are interested in in knowing more about doing business is to really partner up find a a solid partner in Suriname that is within the business community um you know this is something that i think five years ago um we we from door has have have started to do to just uh kind of like aggregate data in terms of sector data in terms of you know just just uh, the seeing trends in in things so that with that information you could guide companies in that sense but um i think you can find some things online but but in terms of data in terms of updated data it's not often so so really it's it's important again to to partner to go within the networks there are different associations that have you know um, certain reports. There is uh, co international companies like like the International Label Organization have interesting reports on uh, you know certain topics that are that are very very uh, good for people who want to do business in Suriname. Um, we partnered with them a year a year or two ago, um, you know, because they did a decent work uh, a program and they were doing different research on. You know what? What should uh, people in Suriname? What what should the the what should the different criteria be? You know, for decent work. So those reports are legit. Those reports are are good. So I would definitely suggest that they do that. Yes. Well, what what I like to do? Uh, we're going to take a little break and and hear a little word from our sponsors. You know, we have to pay the bills. Um, but when we come back, I would like us to address this whole issue of technology, particularly as it pertains to the ease of doing business. So many governments, as a consequence of the pandemic, and certainly trends with they already, have done quite a lot of work in providing support to help companies digitize, and as they say, digitalize their businesses. So one of the things we want to discuss shortly when we come back is how was how this um, been facilitated in Suriname, particularly for businesses that are interested in doing business there. Um, is it at ease? But for, is it easy? So for now, we're going to take um, a word from one of our sponsors and we'll be right back. Assuage Business Development Limited connects critical elements of the international value chain needed to develop and execute seamless go-to-market strategy for growth-focused SMEs. We help our clients identify new market opportunities, craft a strategy to capitalize on these opportunities, execute their go-to-market action plan, maintain and sustain market relevance, and sustain business growth. Contact us today. Call 
310-8979. Yes, thank you so much. Always in the background, um, the, the Assuage unit providing so much support for this podcast and all that we do. So yes, so earlier we, uh, I made mention about the role of technology and the ease of doing businesses. Earlier you mentioned fintech. So I know, for example, in Gaia, in Jamaica, um, persons in that field have been very creative, I would say. And there's a, a very large non-banking sector or persons that operate outside of the banking and the regular finance sector. And they've been using create very creatively these finance wallets and these apps using QR codes and so forth. How is this you know, innovation and technology drive in Suriname? And is it something that other businesses can tap into and benefit from? I'll show this one to Anushka. I know you're our <laughs> resident tech expert here this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, what I said earlier about uh, payments. Yes, there are some online payment options, um, but they are all uh, how do you say it? Connected to a bank because our legislation is that way that you sh that you should be connected to a bank in order to do anything with payment. If you're not connected to a bank, you you are not allowed to start payment solutions. But um, there are many uh, people who start something and uh, you know they will pitch it to the banks, etc. And I say I must say that uh, we have three of the major payment solutions now, but one of the things that um, is not so well is that Suriname now at the moment has not the uh, possibility to receive payments on PayPal, for instance. I know I can uh, pay someone in Trinidad with PayPal, but I cannot do that for Suriname. I can receive money on PayPal, but I cannot pay with it. And okay. uh, the same goes for Stripe. Um, so those of the international um, mobile money uh, platforms or um, payment platforms are a bit restricted in our area. And um, if there is uh, a party that has knowledge about that or has a solution to go around, yeah, th then that is a big business, business opportunity for them. Has the government been doing a lot to help push digitization and digitalization? I know some central banks are even talking about bringing out their own digital currencies. What role has the government played in this regard in helping businesses forge ahead in technology improvements? Okay, before before I, um, uh, sorry, Shalene, I will say this first and then you can uh, add. Um, before I um, say something uh, to, you know, not to be negative about it, uh, let me say this first. We had a government before this one, which was uh, extremely corrupt and uh, disastrous uh, policy. And mo many of the institutions were weakened, and that's what Shalane mentioned earlier. And then in 2020, we had an election and a new government came. But the new government uh, directly had the COVID situation. And after that, there was uh, something else and then something else. So it's it, you know now we have the uh, war in uh, Russia and, and everything is impacting us here. But um, despite that, that is happening, we are still um, eager to do certain things. And for us, it's going to slow. Yes, I understand that they have other crises to handle. And, you know, they first need to, to support all the organizations and the people in the country. So, you know, we get out of the crisis. But if you ask the entrepreneurs and the, the private sector, then we will say, you know, they are not doing it at enough. Uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. That goes <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, that's everywhere. <laughs> but yes, they, they are trying their best, but it's not there yet. Yes, the eGov Commission has been uplifted. We have um, a better structure there now. So the e-government, that is uh, the unit that is responsible for whatever we do with regards to um, uh, digitalization of the government, but also digitization of um, uh, everything that the ministries are doing um, and for bringing the structure. So what we are doing as business support organizations is we help working on the legislation to update that. So we help writing the laws, giving feedback on those to, to get it all started. And, um, but it's like, like Shalene mentioned earlier, there's a lot of bureaucracy, so it's going a little bit too slow for us, yes. 
Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing. Charlene, you wanted to add. Well, yes. So, so in, in short, we have a lot to do in terms of technology, but Anushka knows that as no other. <laughs> um, I do think that for future, what I think you mentioned, you mentioned things in, in the financial sector. Raw within the financial sector, I think now in Suriname is really the best time for technology investments because COVID, if COVID has taught us one thing is that we need technology, right? Yes. Uh, technology is, is here. It has been here, but it's now really here to stay and to, and, to, and to speed up in terms of development. And what we saw within especially the finance sector is that banks and financial institutions have been struggling to really, um, uh, uh, let's say, provide that need for uh, ease of doing business, for quick uh, applications, for uh, a good internet banking software, all of those, those things. And they have been investing a lot. And yes, even from a government standpoint, I think um, a, a lot of effort has been put in, in digitizing uh, you know, even even the institutions. Uh, but yeah, it's not going fast enough. But to be to be honest, there is so much backlog that that is linked to our to even our our um, our legislation. So legislation first needs to be changed in order for certain developments to even go through, right? So because because certain things on that level, on a, a government level, can't even be implemented without having the backing of, of legislation that needs to be uh, changed. So for the finance sector, I would say there is a lot of opportunity for companies to maybe um, help help innovate, um, help partner. Um, it's correct. You cannot you cannot um, start any you know type of type of finance or fintech company if you're not a, you know it's it's very much linked to our bank system and our and again you know how our legislation is. But you can partner and you can you can um, uh, come come towards them with with. Uh, you know, innovative ideas and and maybe even good products, or maybe even on a more sustainable level, you can partner with institutions, and and okay. share knowledge about uh, you know uh, things like like applications and things like uh, you know certain certain techno technological changes. So that is something for the long while. We we spoke a little bit about local content in the whole oil and gas, but I think um, for Suriname. A lot of need in the future will be towards building stronger capacity. So if you're a foreign, capacity, let me say, let me say this. Let me say this with with a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe a little bit uh, strict. But if, if you're a foreigner who wants to come within the country and 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 uh, make a profit, think of ways to do that with the local people and with with sharing and, and enriching, you know, the local business uh, environment and, and uh, the resources that are here because people are very much capable, but sometimes just because of the structure or just because of opportunities, they haven't been always given that, that chance. So, so do that, partner that, partner that. And we will yeah. embrace, we will embrace that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we, you know, unfortunately, you know, this has been such a great discussion so far. I, you know, I'm sure we could go on here for another hour or so, um, but we have to, you know, bring our evening to to an end. But I'd just like to take some closing comments. Maybe there may be something that you've said before you want to summarize. But uh, what's what's the airport, the main airport in Suriname? Johan, 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 Johan Adolf. Yes. Johan Adolf. Pengel. Oh, Pengel. Johan Adolf. Okay. So for Johan for short, right? So we are in the we are waiting yeah. to I'm I'm waiting to catch a flight, you know, and you met a Trinidadian business person. And they told you, listen, man, I, I am here, I want to do business. You you know you have to catch a plane. You have 30 seconds. And you have to tell them three things that would be critical for them coming into Suriname to do business, right? What would be those three things that those three the three pieces of advice that you'd want to give? All right, I'll repeat it again. You're in the Johan for short airport, <laughs> and you're about to catch your plane. You have 30 seconds, and you've been approached. What do you tell this this visitor? Anushka, go ahead. Oh, me, oh, me first. Yes, Anushka. 
first I would say, oh wait, let me take a quick bite. No, just kidding. <laughs> the first thing I would I would tell him or her is um, to keep a, a positive mindset and to be open to perceive what's coming his way, his or her way, and always put up a smile, and make contact with the business association so they can guide him through everything. That's thirty seconds, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So you can go and catch a play now. So Charlene. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would tell them um being successful doing business, you wanna you wanna really uh, uh make some ripples, be authentic. Be authentic okay. in every interaction. I would tell them make the right connections, and I would tell them bring something unique that is sustainable for, for our country, that is sustainable for for you know the business environment. Excellent. Well, ladies, thank you so much, so much. Been great having you. We've had a very uh, informative, um, lively discussion. Um, thank you for taking the time, Charlene, um, Adores Advisory, and Anushka, um, Career the Tech Hub. Did I get it? The Creative Tech Tech Hub, right? Yes, you and get it. Also, board member of Suriname Business Association, and of course, our producer, LSC Publications. We thank you very much for your support um, upcoming more topics we have to go to other countries as well uh, we have lots more to offer in terms of helping you export your businesses your services how to do an export plan lots to get into so to, to follow us check us on linkedin youtube or facebook please like and share to contribute to the discussion you can reach out to us via our email at assuagebdc at gmail.com you can also check out our website at www.assuagebusinessdevelopment.com, right? You'll see lots on there. We also conducted an export readiness survey. So if you want to know what you need to do to get ready for export, check us out. So thank you again. And until next time, think regional and act global. Mm -hmm.